I want to talk to you today about a scripture from a scripture that you're familiar with. And please listen to me. How many of you are trusting God for major things to happen in your life? Major things to happen in your life. How many of you believe that you on schedule and your purpose is, is set before the Lord? Do you believe that? Okay, that's why you're here today. If you're watching or in the comments, go ahead and put today, I'm expecting God. There's a scripture in Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1. The prophet Isaiah is, is about to uh, document for us his calling to the prophetic ministry. And the Bible, the Bible says that Isaiah writes, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Listen to what he said. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, and he was high and lifted up. And he said this, and his train filled the temple. Now, whenever you hear this being preached or taught, what you hear is someone trying to stir you to worship and, and bring something into the sanctuary. But what I want you to hear me today is that this is, a t this is an accident indictment against Isaiah's perception of King Uzziah. I want you all to hear me. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. We're in the sixth chapter of Isaiah, and Isaiah had not had an encounter with God until Uzziah died. I want to even go as far as to say Isaiah could not have an encounter with God until Uzziah died. Sometimes a Uzziah has to die in your life before you can see what God wants to do. Because you think, many times people will have you to think that it's because of them that you make an advancement, or because of them you're in position or have a platform, but really it's not them, it's the Lord. King Uzziah was, was in Judah one of the most innovative and creative kings. When you study the life of King Uzziah, you're going to find that at 16 years old, when he became king, king of Israel, he served for 52 years as in the monarchy. He was the head hunter for, for 52 years, but at 16, he began to reign. His mother's name, Jechaliah, me, meant um, Jah helps or Jah enables, God enables, God as the enabler. And she gave birth to this boy who would be king. And at 16 years old, the stage was set and he became the king of Judah. He was powerful. He was creative. He was young. He was everything that you would follow in this day and age. And as I was preparing to teach this, I've taught this several times before, I want to kind of give you the, the, uh, uh, the short edited version of the story. But I want to read from verse 1 of the story about him in 2 Chronicles 26. And I don't, want you, I don't want you to daydream, but I want you to drift off because everyone, if you're called to anything in, in, in the church, if you're called to anything in this house, this story is critical. When the Bible says in the year that King Uzziah died, he said, I saw the Lord also. You, you need to understand that God could not initiate anything in, in Isaiah's life until Uzziah died. God had to put everything on pause. Because of the way Uzziah saw, I'm sorry, uh, Isaiah saw King Uzziah, God, God can even move. Why? Isaiah can even see God. He was, in, he was in a space where he was called to be the voice to, to Israel. He couldn't, he couldn't even see God, much less see what God wanted him to do. And so God had to wait the time until something happened in Israel that was so renowned, so critical. It, it, it made headline news. And people watched the story till it came to its end, and the end was King Uzziah dying. The train filling the temple was a revelation to Isaiah that Uzziah's victories, the victories that he had won, were not his. Isaiah thought that King Uzziah was doing all this stuff. He was innovative, creative. He was, the, he was influential, all these, and he never for one moment thought that God was doing this through him. He just thought, I want to be like him. And there are times, I want to say this to you, there are times when God will show you a person not so you could aspire to be them. Sometimes he will show you a person, show you what he can do through a person. And then he will show you the shift and say, you don't want to be that. Sometimes you follow people off the cliff of life because they brought, you say, well, I owe them. What do you owe them? Who are you carrying IOUs in your pocket for? The will of the Lord concerning this man of God is that he's going to be a voice to Israel. Uzziah allowed himself to be glorified among the people, not realizing the damaging effect he was having on the young people. Because make this mistake about it, everyone knew he, if, if he could do it at 16, that I sure enough could be the next Uzziah, not the first Isaiah. 
I'm saying a lot of it. Just go. Let me show you this. I, I want to read to you from 2 Chronicles chapter 26. Listen to this man's life. And all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king instead of his father, Amaziah. He built Eloth and restored it to Judah after the king slept with his fathers. Uzziah was 16 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jechariah of Jerusalem, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Listen to this. According to all his father Amaziah had done, he set himself to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who instructed him in the fear of the Lord. Now listen to this statement. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. Listen to the statement. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. Say this out loud. As long as he sought the Lord, God... Say it again. As long as he... Uh-huh. Do you understand that prosperity is not man-made? You understand that favor has to come on your life and the hand of the Lord has to rest upon you. But you do understand that you have to seek the Lord, not for his hand, but for his face. You have to seek the Lord. You have to, I want to know you, not I want my stuff. We have corrupted an entire generation. You look at the preacher, he's riding up in this and, he, and he's living in that and he's, he's walking this and he's dressing in that. I want that. And we go to God and say, I want all you have for me. We don't say, I want you. As long as he sought to know the Lord, God made him. Look, watch this. He went out and made war. Against the Philistine, he broke through the wall of Gath. Gath is where Goliath was from. The people were oversized there. And the wall of Jabna and the wall of Ashdod, he built cities in the territories of Ashdod and elsewhere among the Philistines. God helped him. Listen to this language. God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians who lived in, in Gubel and against the, the uh, Meonites. The Ammonites paid tribute to Uzziah. And his fame, his fame, his fame spread even to the border of Egypt, for he became very strong. Why? How did he become very strong? All he did was seek God. And in seeking the face of God, God says, now go against Egypt. Now go against the Philistines. Now take Gath. Now build against Ashdod. I am with you. And as long as he sought the face of God, vision was clear to him. And he just went and did what God told him to do. You're seeking. I'm, I don't know what God has called me to do. Seek the Lord. Paul said in Colossians, I, your life is hid in Christ. You are dead. You are dead and your life is hid in Christ. You are, he said, well, I can't, I pass, I'm afraid to die. You're already, if you're born again, you're already dead. You are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. How do you, how I find my purpose? I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I told you my story. When I walked into classrooms to take tests or to, or to take the class, I would listen to the instructors. I already know that. I could test out for everything they were teaching. Why? Because I sought the face of God. And as long as I sought the face of God, he made me to prosper. And it gets, I remember I was walking with a guy through, through one of the many facilities of NCC. And the guy said to me, he said, how did you do this? And I stopped and went, I don't know. I had, after 20 years of ministry, I had no idea how we built all that. What did you do to attract me? I didn't know. All I did was seek the face of God, and God caused the thing to prosper. The problem with us is you on the grind. You have, gl you have glorified the grind. Team, no sleep. Team, die early. The culture of the world has sucked you in. You think if you look like them and act like them, you don't understand what holiness means, difference. God takes you and puts you aside, and he points to you. God wants to use your life as a billboard. He wants to use you as a prototype. Even in the music industry, the world does it first, and then five years later, the church does it. and say, look, we've got something new. The Bible says, watch this now. That his fame spread even to the border of Egypt, for he became very strong. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, at the valley gate, at the angle, and he fortified them. He built towers in the wilderness and cut, off many, cut out many cisterns, for he had large herds. But in the, in the uh, Shephila and in the plain, he had farmers and vine dressers in, in the hills and in the fertile lands, for he loved soil. So he wasn't just into, watch this, God gave him a hobby. 
a distraction, an evocation. And what it was for was to keep him, keep his mind. When he was seeking the Lord, he's working the soil. And while he's working the soil, he's seeking the Lord. And God is giving him ideas and inventions. I'm going to show you some things in a minute. The Bible says, moreover, uh, Uzziah had an army of soldiers fit for war in division according to the numbers in the muster made by Jael, the secretary of, of Messiah, the officer, under the direction of Hananiah, one of the king's commanders. The whole number of the heads of fathers' houses of mighty men of valor was 2,600. Under their command, stay with me, under the, uh, the, their command was an army of 3,000 I'm sorry, 307,500 who could make war with mighty power to help the king against the enemy. And Uzziah, Uzziah prepared for all the... She Watch this. He's describing his layout. This is a house of intercessors, of warriors, of people who know how to handle different situations. The success didn't, was not just monetary. Money is the lowest form of prosperity. If you have money and you're not, listen, if God allows you to get money and you're not already prosperous, money will destroy you. When money comes to a person who has a prosperous mentality, they understand their position with God. When they receive money, money becomes a servant to them because money is an excellent servant but a terrible God. Listen to me. Listen to me. Ask me how I know. And Uzziah prepared, watch this. And Uzziah prepared for all the army, shields, he prepared spears, helmets, coats of mail, bows, and stones for slinging. In Jerusalem, he made machines, look at this, he made machines invented by skillful men around him to be on the towers and the corners to shoot arrows and great stones. And his fame spread far, for he was marvelously helped. Listen to this. He was marvelously helped until he became strong. So I want to, in case you missed it, there, there, you watch certain movies and there's an there's a, a, a old school mechanical stone thrower. You know, you see it everywhere. Uzziah invented it. Before then, archers would stand on the wall and shoot. He, de he devised the people around him, through him seeking the Lord, devised mechanized uh, uh, arrow uh, slingers. Where you, where you pull a, a lever and arrows are shot out. No one in the world was doing it. Why? He was seeking the face of God. And as he, as he saw, the, saw the face of God, God made him to prosper. But the Bible says, look at this. The Bible says that his fame spread far because he was marvelous, marvelously, wonderfully helped. And then it, it gives this statement, until he became strong. Say that out loud. Until. Come on, say that again. Until. You had nothing. Nobody knew you. you in high school, you, you weren't even looked upon as likely to succeed. You were nobody. Heartbroken, rejected. Doing whatever you could to fill the void. And you start to seek the Lord. You got connected with the Lord. And all of a sudden, you start getting all this wisdom about you. And God began to help you. And God began to bring you up. And now look at you. People know who you are. You have a social media following. Look at that. When you put in, when you put in resumes, they're picking yours out the pile. All of a sudden, you're somebody. You have a name. You have a little fame about yourself. God is helping you. But the problem is, the Bible says God, can, God is able to help us until in our eyes we become strong. Be careful. Be careful not to let strength be your demise. Your perceived strength because you think you're in. Because you think people accept you now. Be careful. Don't allow, do not allow yourself. Do not allow yourself to be caught up with people who think that knowing them makes you somebody. Or makes you something. I didn't come here to play today. You know what? You know one of the things about about a church like us, where we where we carry a shield of, of another, um, or a bigger entity. When I first saw Matthew Stevenson, Dr. Matthew Stevenson, I saw a man who had the hand of God on him, and he was greatly hated because because he was be, he was before his time. When we talk about him, we say he's an 80-year-old apostle in a young body. The obvious hand of God is upon him. And sometimes we could think because we connected to him that we have what he has. Oh 
The Bible says that his fame spread far, for he was marvelously up till he, till he was strong. But when he became strong, he grew proud. The King James says it differently. I, I like the King James better because the King James says it like this in verse 16. It says, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. When he became strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord. He went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. And Azariah the priest went in after him. And with four score priests of the Lord that were valiant men. Translation, when, when Azariah saw that Uzziah had gotten beside him, said they saw, let me tell you something. When people become arrogant, it, do, it doesn't happen overnight. You can see it happening. You can see the gradual transition from seeking the Lord to promoting self. And they watched him transition. And so Azariah was thinking to himself, I got to, I got to intercede for this man. And what begins to happen, uh, um, he began to take liberties. One day he walked into the, the tabernacle. He just walked into the tabernacle. And the Bible says when he walked into the, the temple, the priest came with 80 fighting priests. Now, not all the priests knew how to throw, throw hands. That was real. No, for real, the, the, the priest had to fight. I mean, if you're not a fighting priest, I can't use you. I mean, the Bible says he went in after him with 80 of the priests who were valiant men. That means they were warriors. And they withstood Uzziah, Uzziah the king and said unto him, I, I like the language of King James, it appertaineth not unto thee. I love that. It's, this, is, this, is, this is above your pay grade. That's what it's saying. They say it it appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord. In other words, it's not a part of your calling. We know who you are. We know you're famous. We know you're anointed. But this is not a part of your calling. Well, come on here. We, we know you're wonderful. We've seen you do all. You're creative. But this is not your office. And until we begin to honor the offices that people are called to and the gifting that God has given to his people, God cannot do anything of substance here in this church. You're playing games. God did not send me here to lead from the rear. You needed a pastor. Because with all this gifting and all this greatness that's going to bubble up out of this place, you need a cover on this pot. Or else you're going to make a whole mess in Atlanta. I'm going to tell you this right now. Understand what I'm saying to you. you got to honor offices and gifts and people around you. You say, well, they're not called to anything. The least among us, the, the least among us, listen to me, are called of God to something in this house. If, if God has called you to something, let me see your hand. Wave at me. Look around you. You're not the only one. And be clear of this every time. Let me say something. Even prophets. When a prophet gives a word, other prophets are on the, on the wall judging it. Am I right? When I speak a word, other teachers are listening. It appertaineth not unto thee to step into offices that you're not called to, to walk into places you're not called to. I have all nine gifts of the Spirit. You a lie. There's no truth in you. The Bible says the body is tempered together so that we will need each other. I need you and you need me. We're one happy family. What about that? Watch this. Watch this. The Bible says, the Bible says, in verse eight, and they withstood King Uzziah. They withstood him and they said unto him, it's, it's, it's not for you to do this, to burn incense to the Lord. It's the priest. The sons of Aaron, they are consecrated to burn incense. And here's what they said to him. Get out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed. Neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord. In other words, he's saying, you're messing up your place with God. You've been doing this too long. You've come too far. You've, you've accomplished too much to offend the Lord in this thing. And the Bible says, now, I'm going to tell you what happens to us. Remember now, but at this point, he's famous. At this point... Pastor Tyler, he's strong. At this point, he is the man. No doubt he didn't go in there by himself. He has soldiers with him. But these 80 priests were willing to die. There was history here. The danger of this is that in the records of Israel, in the annals of time, a, 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 a king sent 
of men, our, our soldiers into the temple, into the tabernacle. And 80 valiant priests were slain at a place called Nob by a man named Doeg under the orders of King Saul. So these priests, when they walk in to withstand the most famous king that Israel has seen beside David, they were in fear and trembling. What's going to happen? But they were willing to die to shut it down. They said, you, you are beside yourself. Whatever happens, happens. Whatever, whatever happens, happens. But we can't let this go down like this. I'm here to tell you today, for in my, my word to you, whatever happens, happens. Look at this. The Bible says, instead of, instead of humbling himself, then Uzziah was wroth. Let, let me give you a different translation, because I want us to get all of this. Is that okay? I mean, start, I'm just reading the scripture. Then Uzziah was angry. Now he had a censer in his hand to burn incense. That's a, you've seen them in, in, the, in our traditional Orthodox churches. He had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And when he became angry the, uh, with the priest, the Bible says leprosy broke out on his forehead in the presence of the priest in the house of the Lord by the altar of incense. Isn't it amazing? He was anointed to do everything else. But when he stepped into the office, into the place he was not supposed to be, he, God invested so much in him. He was God's poster child for what prosperity looked like in Israel. God was like, look at Uzziah. That's how Isaiah knew him. Every little boy wanted to be him. All the girls wanted to marry someone like him or marry him. He was the, he was the prototype. But the Bible says God helped him when he became strong. He be, also became arrogant. And he walked in and starts stepping out of line and out of purpose. And what happens is now he's smitten with leprosy. He's, he's angry. He feels the heat in his forehead. Leprosy broke out on his forehead. And, and as Uriah, the chief priest, and all the priests looked at him and beheld, he was leprous in his forehead, and he, they rushed him out quickly. And he himself hurried out to go. Now imagine, he's angry, and they're angry at him. And they stand each other down, and then leprosy broke out, and all of a sudden they start backing up. And he's like, what? And they're pointing. He looked at my Lord, my, my Lord, look, look on your forehead. He's like, what? And he touched himself. He probably looked it at the brass, look, and he goes, and he sees it on him. Now he submits to them. What, what are we going to do? They said, we got to get you out of here. Because they understood leprosy in the temple. You, you could die here. So they rushed him out. Watch it. They rushed him out. And King Uzziah was a leper to the day of his death. And being a leper, he lived in a separate house. For he was, listen, 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 for he was excluded from the house of the Lord. And Jotham, his son, was king, was over the king's household, governing the people of the land instead of Uzziah. Now the rest of the acts of Uzziah from the first to the last, listen to this, ready for this? Verse 20, now the rest of the acts of Uzziah from first to last, Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos, wrote. Can you imagine? He was his hero. He was the one. He was the one that we all aspired to be. How did Isaiah see the Lord? He probably was writing Uzziah's story. And he got to the part where, how did this happen? This wasn't supposed to happen. This is not the way the story is supposed to go. He's now ostracized and exiled, sequestered to maybe the west wing of the palace while his son rules. And he's out there, and he just looks through the window at what he built. And he's thinking to himself, I should have listened. I should have listened. Pride is a funny thing. It's like bad breath. Your mouth is right under your nose, but you don't know your breath went left until someone tells you. So to prevent against it, we have a maintenance plan to make sure 
that when we leave the house in the morning, we don't offend. If you don't protect against, people see your pride before you know you have it. You would even, you would even invoke the name of the Lord, the call of the Lord to promote. And the Lord told me, even your gift, when the enemy, when the enemy commandeers you and deceives you, even your gift is at his disposal. He will use your gift. When the, you, do you think the enemy just wants you for you? Do you understand that you are, you have this treasure, an earthen vessel? You have a, tre- listen to me, do you understand that when Jesus lives in you, he comes with gifts, he is packing, he makes you gifted, he makes you creative. You, I'm a creative, no, you, because you, the creator is in you, but understand this. When the enemy gets you walking in pride, and you know in the scripture it says, pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit. You don't know what a haughty spirit is. It's, it's when you get to a place in pride, when you, it's, it's not in, you stop looking at yourself. Pride is you looking at yourself. Look at me. Look at what I've built. Look at what I've built. We built this. Someone, we built this. We are all nations. Do you think the devil cares what you call yourself, who you're associated with, who you're connected to? Do you think the devil cares that God imported a guy that, that is, I was known before I got here. Your apostle is war and not. Do you think the devil cares? All he has to do. You think many times the devil is resisting you? Read the temptations of Jesus. Often he, he offers to assist you. And I posted it this week. I posted something this week. He offers to assist you in exchange for worship. You say, I've never, you say, what's that, what's that? I never worship the devil. You may never worship the devil. He doesn't want you to worship him first. Are you old enough to remember Morris Day and the time? At, at some point in the concert, Morris will get worked up and he's doing his thing. See what you see. Y'all pray for James. He's doing his thing, and someone comes out with a mirror. And he starts going, Watch this, watch this. The enemy doesn't invite you to worship him. He says to you, Look at you. Look what you've built. Look at all these inventions. Look at your creativity. Look at you. Look at your gifting. Look at all these trainings. Look at what you have done. And he tells you you're bigger than you really are. God is the one that helped you. No, no, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. God is the one that helped you. It wasn't you. Point to somebody and say, it wasn't you. Point to somebody and say, it wasn't you. Now point to somebody and say, it wasn't me. You sound like Shaggy up in there. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. Watch this. The enemy, when he wants you, when he wants you to worship him, he holds a mirror in front of you. And he said, Look at you. You are wonderful. They don't know what they miss out. Look at you in your perfection. Look at you in your giftedness. When you walk on the platform, people stand up. Look at you. Look at the comments. Look at your follow. Look at the likes. Look at you. Look at your body. You're beautifully formed. Look at you. When you get up in the morning, you look in the mirror and say, yeah, I don't look so good. The devil say, I don't know. Oh, you can fix that. When you look now, look at you. The people who the people who threw you away, they wish they treated you better. Look at you. And you start worshiping. Look at me. He said, Look at you. He said, Look at me. Look at you. Look at me. Now you get out there and your gift is flowing and you think that because the gift is flowing that God is present. The, the gifts, the gifts, plural, and calling, singular, are without repentance. What that means is God won't take them back. They work because they were designed to work. They will always work. It doesn't mean that God is working with you. Pride. 
Pride is not the sin of a few. Everybody has it. We were infected with it when Eve and Adam ate from the tree. And if you don't watch it, I'm going to tell you, sit for a minute. Just some of us are on a journey. Please hear my heart. I, and I want to say, I am not throwing off on anybody. If I'm preaching to anybody, I was sitting in front of my computer the other day, waiting for the pastor's lifeline to start, and Greg, who is my assistant, had put on the screen some pictures of some stuff I'd built. Elder Pool, you know, the dome. I sat and I looked at the dome. You know what I said? Wow. I said, what a beautiful facility. I actually said, when I got to Dothan, nothing was there. No, no, it's tr- I mean, nothing was like, like that in the black community. I looked at the properties and I go, man, Sanctuary One and the uh, membership services building and the old school gym, the fellowship dome, the sanctuary dome, the helicopter to fly us to Dothan and back. And I sat back and I said, wow. And the Lord said, so you did that? And I said to the Lord, I said to the Lord, I said to the Lord, had I done that, listen to what I said, had I done that, I would be able to do it at the drop of a hat anywhere we go. But I said to the Lord, but I humble myself before you and offer no resistance because I'm in a place right now where I have to trust you to do what you did before because I understand I didn't do that. Watch this. And here's what the Lord said. Ready for this? There was a time when you thought you did. And I said, why didn't you tell me? You ready for this? He said, you couldn't hear anybody but you. But the problem is, I didn't know it. The intercessors around me, Vicky, they knew it. But here's the problem. It was pride and I was calling it pain. It was pride and I was calling it promotion. And when my bishop said to me, I need you to sit down for six months. Six months. You know what I said? This church can't function without me for six months. So you Jesus now? And when I said that, that's when I heard myself. I was like, who said what? And I fell on my face before the Lord. And I I have journals where I wrote, and the Lord says, the journey to wholeness begins now. I had everything. James wanted me for nothing. And I come up here, and I talk to people, and the young men and the young women think that I'm just up here talking. Do not be a fool. That's some little clown get it, come in my inbox talking about, um, uh, he was talking crazy to me, so I blocked him. I will block you and your friends and your family in a minute. I, I, you're not going to steal my peace in the name of Jesus. I, my, my, that's my peace. That's, peace, is, peace is profitable. So he came in my inbox talking about, I posted this thing about reconciling with a friend, and, and he posted, that's your problem right now. And I'm like, you know what? So I, bl- I just blocked him. I, I blocked him and all his pages, everything that pertained to him. I, I chased that, traced it down. If you follow him, I blocked you too. Now, so, so let me show you something. I'm going to help you out. No, no, no. You see, let me tell you something. Because people think that because you share your testimony, that is for ammunition. I'm sharing this with you to help you. I'm, I've no, I know where the landmines are. And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to be done. i got time. Let me share this with you. Some of you are on a part of your journey right now where the Lord, the Lord himself, is resisting you. Yeah. So, so I want to shift this for a minute. You, Isaiah, yeah. The Lord himself is resisting you. Say, say Allah, say the Lord himself will resist you. He will. So, so in, I believe it's in the book of James chapter 4. I want to go there, and, and I'm not, I can't do all this today because we're, we're almost done. Did you all get any kind of help today? All right. 
James chapter 4 verse 6 begins with begins with an interesting statement. It says, but he gives more grace. When a, when a sentence begins with but, it means that he's addressing something else. The description in James chapter 4 verse 1, the question is asked, from whence comes wars and fightings among you? Why are you fighting each other? Why, why are you separated into groups? Why, why, I, if, I, if I sent you all here, why are you trying to push each other out? If I gave you what I believe you need for this season, then who are you to tell me what you need? I gave you exactly what you need. He says, from whence come wars and fights? He said, come they not of your own lusts that war in your members? He said, you're fighting. And the, when you look at the language of it, he says, you're fighting pride. He said, you want to promote your opinion over everybody else's opinion. You, want, you, you don't think no, anyone sees and knows God but you. When you look at the, the Lord speaking of the church, all, all the pronouns are in plurality. When he says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, he's just not talking about you. He's talking about you all. Y'all are the temple of the Holy Spirit. When God said I will dwell among you, he says, listen, among is not an inside word. It's an around word. It's about locale. He says, notice the Lord says, when you gather, when you come together, or when you're in vicinity, he says, I will be in the midst of you. He got, God can't be in the midst of one person. He'll be inside you, but in the midst. The believing community is a powerhouse. It's, 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 a, it's an engine. I went to, I had an old car, old truck one time, and it, was just, it was a nice truck, but it wasn't running, running correctly. And I went to a, a, a person, I said, hey, what's going on with this? And the mechanic said to me, he said, you have a small part in your engine that we need to replace because it feeds um, the gas, wherever, or uh, is it if, is the distributor, something like that? He said, you need to replace. I had never even heard of it. I paid a little bit of money, truck went back to running nicely. But the problem is with us is that we don't understand. And so we're fighting. And he gets down, he says, he said, the problem with you is, and he, he, James says, read James chapter 4. He said, you know what your problem is? He said, you're committing spiritual adultery with the world. He said, now, now watch this. He said, you, you have become friends. The word philos. He said, you've become a person that wants to see your reflection in the world. You want the world to accept you. You say, well, Jesus loved the world. No, for God so loved the world. He, God so loved the people in the world. But he said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. He says, if you love the world, listen to this. He said, if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. What does he mean? He means because, watch this now, the world system is not, is not built on valuing other people. The world system is built on valuing yourself. The world system has no windows, just mirrors. All you see is you. And, and, and the word friendship means, the word philos means, I love you because I see me in you. Listen to, the, listen to this definition. I love you because you're like me. I love you because I see a reflection of myself. That's friendship. We're not called to friendship before we call to, we're called to agapos or agape, which is the love of that. I got to value you first. When I value you, then I'll see whether or not we have things in common. Then he comes down. He says, he said, you adulterers and adulteresses. He said, no, you not. That the spirit that dwells within you lusted to envy. Translation, don't you understand that the spirit that God put in you is a jealous spirit? He wants you closer to him. He wants to own all of you because he wants to do so much with you. And the more you pull away from him, the more he will chase you down and make your life miserable. Why? He said, Pastor, that's, sound, that's not sound doctrine. It is sound doctrine. See, you think that your entire life is to be lived in this earth realm. This is the shortest part of your existence. If you, Adam lived to be 900 plus years, Methuselah lived to be 969 years old. And I promise you at the end of this life, he said, man, that went by fast. Because eternity is in your heart, in my heart. We were designed to live forever with God. We were created in the God class. I pray you all hear me. Now get this, get this. He says, you have messed up by chasing the world. And then he says, but he gives more grace. But he offers more grace. Isn't that incredible to know that we could be in the position that I preached this morning and he 
God's response is to give more grace. And he said this. He said, he gives more grace. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. That one statement, God resists the proud. So when God sees you get into pride, Pastor, you don't know you're in pride, you know what he does? He sends a messenger of Satan. What? Yeah. In, in 2 Corinthians 12, Paul said, he said, I knew a man. He said about 14 years ago. He said, whether in the spirit or in the body, he said, I don't know for sure. He said, but such a man was caught up to the third heaven, to paradise. And he heard things that were not lawful to utter in the earth. Why was not lawful? Because there was no language in the earth to describe what he saw. Paul said, Paul said, such a man was caught up to the third heaven, and he had visions and dreams. And he said, he said, oh, watch this. And he said, the man was him. Listen to the statement he made. He said, and because I was given such visions and dreams of the Lord, he said, there was given unto me a thorn in my flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, listen to this, lest I be exalted above measure. He said, well, well, pastor, that's a sickness. No, it's a vulnerability. It's a limitation. When you read the scriptures, matter of fact, I got documentation that I could, I could read for you. There is scripture in the Bible that tells us exactly where that thorn was. It actually, matter of fact, if you go back somewhere, where is it? There's one scripture uh, that talked about, where is it? It wasn't on my notes to preach today, but I sure want to show it to you. Here, in Judges chapter 2. Yeah. He says, the Lord says, so now I, I declare that I will no longer drive out the people living in your, in your land. Here's what he said. They will be thorns in your sides. And their gods will be a constant temptation to you. That's what he told the people who had gotten beside themselves and stopped seeking him. So now when Paul says, that was given to me, God gifted him. Look at your life. When you, you knew, you, you knew you were most qualified for that job. You knew it, but you didn't get it. Why? You, you knew if anybody should have succeeded at this, you have the mindset, the skill set, the brain, you, but you didn't, it didn't happen. You went to the Lord and said, Lord, what's going on? All these things are happening. It seemed like everywhere you turn is 360 trial. 360 trial, what's going on? And the Lord's saying nothing. Paul said three times, three separate times, I shut my whole life down. Because the picture of, hum of humility in the Bible is through fasting and praying. Three times, Dre, he said, I shut my entire world down, didn't preach to nobody, didn't talk to nobody, shut myself in to seek the Lord. He said, what's going on? He said, three times, the Lord refused to change the situation. You know what the Lord said? He said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is perfected in your limitations. My strength is perfected in your vulnerability. Here's what he said. To, here's what he said. He said Paul's like, why are you allowing this to happen? And, and that's what Paul wrote. Paul wrote it. He said, the Lord told him, I've shown you a lot. I've told you a lot. He, Paul didn't know that in, in years to come, he, he would have written two-thirds of the New Testament. He didn't know his letters would be, pre, would be preserved for posterity. He didn't know. But what God did, God made sure that everywhere he went, there were people there to resist him. He was stoned. He was shipwrecked. It seemed like God is using him mightily, and then now all of a sudden he's in trouble. What is going on? What is God doing? God is stopping him from getting above measure because God understands like Uzziah. If you get above a certain measure, I can't help you no more. I will help you till you become strong. Now the trial begins when you become strong. What happens? What do you do when you become strong? Can I still trust you when I make you strong? When I got you the job, can I still trust you? When, I, when you believe God for the marriage, now the marriage, you, you have the mate you wanted. Can I still trust you? I, they, 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 they consecrated you to the office. Now you're, you're in a position. Can I still trust you? Can I still trust you? You said, they don't see me, Lord. God said, now they see you. Now they celebrate you. Can I still trust you? They didn't let me sing before. Now you're singing. Now you're leading. Can I still trust you? 
Or do you want to be something apart from me? In the year that King Uzziah died, for the first time in my life, I saw the Lord. And I realized he was high and lifted up. He wasn't. And his train, the train in the temple is where the kings will walk down the aisle. And every king they conquered, they will cut a piece of their garment off and tie it to his train. When Uzziah died, Isaiah realized when, realized when the Lord walks in that all the victims looking closely at those colors. Wait a minute, I thought Uzziah killed those kings. God said it was me the whole time. Every victory that Uzziah had was tied off to God's train. You think people helped you? It was God. Burn those IOUs. You don't owe them nothing but to love them. You owe nothing but to honor them. Father, we honor you. Father, we honor you for the lives and the people that we're going to encounter. And the gifts that you've given to us, we will use them with acknowledgement that we're just the vessel. And the excellency of the power is of you. The victories belong to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. So from this place, God, where we've sought through our pain and through all the things we've been through that were so distasteful to try to make ourselves bigger, we try to blow ourselves up so maybe people will fear us like an animal kingdom when a frog feels threatened, he just blows himself up. We call him a blow frog. You see, when you see a bear, you make yourself bigger so he'd be afraid of you. And so we think that if we make ourselves bigger, then life will submit to us. What the Bible says in Uzziah's secret was that he sought the Lord. He was greatly helped. Why don't you say this to the Lord? Say, Lord, I want you, only you. And whatever, for whatever reason, say for whatever reason, you sent me to this earth. I want you as I fulfill it. Say, I want you. Is that your testimony today?